when AIDS started to happen, at around the seventh or eighth person I knew who died of it, I found that I was not able to remember everybody. I have a list, and not counting people whom I only knew professionally, but only people whom I knew personally or socially, as in we'd been at the same party, or guests somewhere, or bought each other a drink someplace. The list has 200 names on it. You hear about it's not what it used to be from the older generation a lot. It ain't what it used to be. Well, it's not, it never was. It always changes, right? But I was in the art community and I saw so much constant loss of a lot of people who put a color, a hue on gatherings. It was like these artists coming together and I started seeing that drop out and I saw the nature of everything changing so fast. If AIDS never happened, I think that we'd be so much further along the arts and homelessness all that would be different. We'd be families, there'd be families. We'd already just be doing what we were doing anyway, you know, taking care of each other. It definitely would have been different, equal rights as we understand it, to live safe lives, to be represented, not be discriminated against, would have probably happened sooner. If AIDS never happened, I would be celebrating my 36th anniversary with Richard. We were intended for each other. All that talent, all the people who died, they would be here contributing to everything. Maybe this delay through AIDS, maybe the point of it was to really show our strength. Tonight, a special report on the American queer colonies. Their influence on the United States is undeniable. Their political power, unprecedented. As their population and territories continue to grow, they are being scrutinized like never before. On this series, we will explore the history, present and the future of what has been called, the secret country. The 1980s were a golden era for the gay population. It was a decade defined by a dominance of the arts, victories in politics and groundbreaking developments in healthcare. Among the many achievements was the founding of Stonewall Nation, a collection of queer communes. The nation was governed by a group of activists from the earlier gay liberation era. It's a sort of interesting time in history. We never thought that when gay people came out of the closet that our problems were going to be solved. Our problems were just beginning because our very visibility is what freaks them out the most. With the help of volunteers, donors, and a savvy political machine, Stonewall Nation expanded across the United States. The nation not only attracted young people and artists, but seniors and professionals in all fields. This diversity helped expand the small communes into the sprawling territories we now refer to as the queer colonies.
the colonies are self-sufficient. A generation of seasoned activists have enacted progressive policies and social programs that have become the gold standard. Suicide, addiction, homelessness and even venereal disease rates are the lowest in the country. Despite their differences, the colonies are closely connected by a common language and culture. Now, after electing countless progressive politicians across the country, the colonies face their biggest challenge yet. The nomination of colony ambassador Vito Russo, to be the first openly gay president of the United States. As the election of 2020 looms, the world is watching, in astonishment that 10% of the population could have so much influence over the most powerful country in the world. Perhaps the golden era has barely begun. Coming up, we will explore the politics, nightlife and sexuality of the American queer colonies as well as the consequences of these freedoms and their effect on the rest of the world.